I reckon this is the game of the round between Fremantle and Carlton on the weekend, Borry. And I'm pleased to say that the former West expat and also the assistant coach of the Carlton Football Club joins us on the program, Robbie Wiley. G'day, Robbie. G'day, g'day, Brad. How are you, mate? Going really well. This is a big game, isn't it? I mean, we, I know we talk about it every week. Yeah, this is a big game. That's a big ch- But this is really a big game. It is, Brad. It's uh, certainly, you know, Fremantle have uh, set the pace, so even with all their injuries. Um, they're a really tough side to crack. So um, from our point of view, you know, we can we can only take it, uh, the old cliche, one game at a time. But, you know, we're really focused uh, on, on um, Fremantle. We come in with some pretty good form, uh, three wins on the trot. And, and particularly, I thought, last week, Against the Gold Coast, we uh, we played four quarters of footy, and maybe we haven't done that during the course of the year. So um, the boys come away with a lot of confidence from from Saturday because Gold Coast is certainly a side that's uh, up and coming. Robbie, last uh, few weeks you've uh, played before Port Adelaide, so you've won. You've gone into the eight. They've won. You've gone back out. It's been that seesawing battle. They play Adelaide in a local derby this week, and Adelaide played Fremantle last week, and they were in the match for a long time. Freo haven't been as efficient with the football, but as you would know. No, defensively, they've been very, very good. Uh, well, I've certainly set uh, you know great parameters in their defensive uh, style of footy. Ross Lyon has uh, got Frio, you know, ever since day one, you know, playing very good football that way. So, you know, it's a huge job for us to, to be able to, to crack that defence. Um, we did play them in, in a pre-season game, and I know that's uh, completely different to the home and away, but um, we had pretty good success against Fremantle. So, again, you know, um, the last few weeks plus uh, that knowledge that uh, they did well against Frio um, Carlton boys, uh, we go in. But, you know, as I said, every game is different, um, and yes, it has been a seesawing. And history always says that uh, the last, you know, half a dozen games, there's always upsets and there's always twists and turns. But... You know, it's all about, as I said, from from a Carlton point of view, it's all about just this week. And uh, we know that we have to play really good football. We have to play with a lot of composure, a lot of smartness, because, um, you know, you turn the ball over, you can get hurt by uh, Fremantle. So, uh, a great challenge. Like every team, it's injury and suspension has been a bit of a challenge, um, with weight and a few others in and out and all that sort of stuff. So you've had to swing blokes around a bit, particularly in your key posts. Yeah, definitely, Brad. And, uh, you know, you just got to, you know, take your hat off to Lockie Henderson. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of players in the competition at the moment that are very good, you know, swing, swingmen. And, um, you know, you just look at Harry Taylor, for, for example, who's done that, uh, you know, very well for Geelong. But Lockie, you know, through our, um, you know, suspe- uh, sort of injury to Jared Waite, got thrown up, up forward and he's been a revelation. Um, he's such a skillful player and he's a very smart player. Um, he was having a great season as a backman, but uh, but now he, he's certainly kicking goals. So, um, you know, there's even young Matthew Watson, who who was in the reserves, uh, our VFL side, the Northern Blues, for um, all year. And uh, with Henderson going forward, gave him an opportunity. And uh, we've been really pleased with the way uh, young Matthew Watson's going. So, you know, if he can hold up and that keeps uh, Henderson uh, up forward, well, you know, it sort of gives us uh, a few a bit more ammunition. One thing that has caused, I think, a fair bit of disruption in your engine room anyway is, uh, you know, you haven't had Carrazzo, you didn't have Murphy, you just didn't have Robinson. I know he's back this week. But you, you have had players in that area which you haven't had available for the whole season, have you? So you've had to sort of bite and scratch a little bit and try to evolve the team? Uh, yes, uh, Carl, you know, you're sort of, um, you know, you're on the money a little bit there. Um, but every side has players that come in and out. I um, mean, Andrew Carrazzo has been a very important player to Carlton and uh, he's had a few injuries. Um, he was just uh, sort of coming good and then he did a calf to put him out for a little while. So he's had uh, two or three games back now. So we're looking for his leadership and his ability to to really play a role for us. Um, I think uh, Chris Judd and Mark Murphy probably haven't had their best years. Um, but, you know, just of late they've been on the training track and they've been able to, to get out there regularly. So uh, I would think that uh, that augurs well for, for Carlton, that uh, if we can get those two guys playing well together, then it gives us a lot of firepower. Um, and, and then, you know, players such as Yaron and Betts and, and Gard, I think that, you know, there's been a lot said about them, but they... They played really well last week as, as a threesome, and um, I, I just believe that they're starting to gel. Uh, they've had some interruptions also, Carl. So, um, yeah, as I said, if we can get enough ball into our forward line, we believe that we've got some real firepower up there. So with styles and brands of football, as they refer to it these days, Robbie, um, yours looks suited more to the bigger grounds, like Subi, like Metricon, like the MCG. So uh, in the past, you were very good at Eddie Had, but it's been a little bit indifferent in more recent times. 
It, uh, Brad, well, you know, when we came on board, uh, Mick realised that the record that Eddie had hadn't been fantastic, so um, you know, we sort of brought the, the uh, boundary line in at uh, Viggy Park um, so that the dimensions were very similar to Eddie had. And, you know, uh, the players have now got confidence when Eddie had doesn't, uh, you know, hold any sort of um, any worry to us. We've won the last uh, four out of our last five uh, games that Eddie had, Brad. So, you know, as I said, we go there knowing that we can play that ground uh, with ease. Just just a couple of the younger players that sort of seem to have been squeezed out a little bit. Uh, Kane Lucas, Jared Karcher. I think Karcher was a late inclusion, wasn't he, last week when uh, one of your other players pulled out late. Uh, is that is that something that's going to happen a little bit more of because Lucas since he's been sort of pushed more forward doesn't seem to be able to get anywhere near as much ball as he was for you because he seemed to be going pretty well uh, yeah Carl you're on the money there again um, Kane's had a really good year uh, playing most of his football on the wing and uh, of late you know as you guys know Mick uh, Malthouse plays uh, horses for courses and uh, with matchups and the way that we believe the strategies can you know overcome the opposition which sometimes means that there might be one or two more run with players go through the middle and that's you know sort of forced Kane up forward but you know we have confidence that Kane's a really good forward and you know as a junior he played a lot as a half forward flanker um, he, he probably played his worst game last week but you know we feel that um, he, he's got a lot of uh, confidence behind him and he'll bounce back and he's a really important player for us because he gives us a lot of run he's got good leg he's got good leg for us because he gives us a lot of run he's got good leg the other one you just mentioned Jared Kasia uh, Jared's a great story you know he was on the Carlton list for a couple of years he then um, got delisted went and played in the Sandville and finished fifth in the McGarry got redrafted as a rookie by Carlton and um, with the injury to, to Andrew Kratz so he came in and played you know in a run with Roll and uh, he's been fantastic he, he shows a lot of hardness um, he's very disciplined so you know it, it, it's good that you know those sorts of players are coming through because the future of Carlton is a lot of these young kids coming through Bootsman was the one that missed out last week Carl yeah, right. through, um, through illness and and, uh, you know, he's another young person that's got a lot of talent. He just needs to play more football. You know Crowley's going to go to one of your goodens. Um, of course. So uh, how, do you rate do you the, how do you rate the Fremantle midfielders? Who do you think needs to be uh, worked upon mm. most? Is it Barlow? Is it Mundy? Is it Fife? <laughs> Brad, you, you know, you've just named three very good midfielders. They're, uh, they're fantastic. I mean, then you've got Daniel Pearce and uh, Nick Subin goes through there. So that, they've got a really good bunch of talented footballers. Um, you know, they're big bodied, they're, they're very good in close. So, um, the good thing is that, uh, Matthew Cruz has been in terrific form. His last few weeks, he's, uh, he's really led from the front and he's given, you know, our players on ground level, uh, the opportunity to, to win the footy. I think, you know, he hit, hits to advantage last week was, you know, sort of clearly the best. So, uh, he needs to be able to play well. I think, uh, young Zach Clark is, is an emerging player and, um, you know, he's going to be a handful and of course, Every game that Aaron Sandylands plays, he's going to get better through, um, you know, through the injuries that he's had. So um, we, we have to really, um, you know, make sure that, you know, the players that will be assigned to those guys that really do their job because, uh, you know, they only had 33 entries last week, Pat, and they still won the game. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they're reasonably efficient up there. And, um, you know, as I said, it's, it's got a great opportunity for some of our younger guys to be matched up against, uh, you know, Mundy and Hill and uh, Fife. I mean, Fife is just a, an outstanding young footballer. So, um, with Judd, Murphy, and uh, Carazzo and these type of players, it's, it's going to be a, a, you know a great match up for our mids. Now, whether you finish eighth or ninth, are you preparing for finals? Uh, look, we're really just preparing to, to play Fremantle, to be honest, Brad. And you know, I mean, that's easily you can say, well, come on, you. you know, of course, every every team at this stage is close. Uh, you know, is still wanting to play finals, but. You know, realistically, we've just got to make sure that we string games together. We, we still control our own destiny. We believe that if we can win, you know, all our games, then, you know, finals is a possibility. But most importantly is, you know, the challenge of Fremantle. And, um, as I said, it's, uh, they have been fantastic, unbelievable with all their injuries that they've had during the year. But, um, they just come in and know, they know their processes. They know what's expected of them. So, um, you know, as I said, it's, it's more about the Saturday that's uh, in our uh, yeah. minds. Now, regardless whether you make the eight or not, it sounds like you're going to turn over that list a little bit. Any chance we're going to have Yaron back in Western Australia or has Eddie Betts priced himself out of the marketplace now? Well, as I said, there's lots of twists and turns, uh, not only in the game spread, but in uh, what happens after that. But, look, you know, Chris is still under contract and... Uh, 
you know, since that little, I suppose, uh, thing with being a sub, uh, he, he's been fantastic. His intensity, um, he's not, you know, getting a lot of the footy, but he's kicking his couple of goals and he's putting enormous pressure on up, uh, up forward and, uh, you know, averaging five, six, seven tackles a game. So, um, look, every team will, will look at their list. Um, every team have got to make changes. Uh, we know that, you know, it was said that uh, for us as Carlton Footy Club to, you know, improve, we've, we've certainly got to add value to our list. And, uh, and, and Nick, I think, was quoted in saying yesterday that um, whether we cut a deep or whether we, you know, uh, and whatever, um, there will certainly be changes. There's no doubt about that. Good on you, Robbie. Appreciate your time. Good luck on the weekend. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Carl. See you, Rob.